Subaru is well known for making rugged, outdoorsy vehicles which are ready to take on the rough and tumble off the countryside. So the car I've got this week should be no different. Say hello to the second generation XV. But is it tough enough to deserve wearing the famous six star badge? Well, to find out, I'm gonna kick this review off a little bit differently by taking the car off road. Right, before I set off, let me talk to you about the engine. Underneath the bonnet, I have a naturally aspirated 1.6 litre boxer engine, four cylinder petrol, which produces 114 horsepower. Yes, I know that isn't really a lot, is it? In regards to torque, it produces just 150 newton meters. So needless to say, this engine is far from punchy. It is mated to a CVT automatic gearbox, and that is the only gearbox you can have for the XV. So if you want the manual, you'll have to look elsewhere. Tough luck. You can also have a two litre boxer engine if you prefer. Uh, that offers 156 horsepower with 196 newton meters of torque. And once again, that is also mated to a CVT automatic. So let's get on the road and see what this car can do. Right, start the engine like so. There we go, right, pop it into drive. And let's disembark. So before I get into the really muddy stuff, let me talk to you a little bit more about the engine. Make sure I'm good to pull out. Yes, I am. So as I mentioned, it hasn't really got a lot of power. And because this has got a CVT, you will find it doesn't like to be rushed. Now, the advantage of having a CVT means the car is smooth to drive and it is pretty effortless. But when you want to put your foot down and make some progress, you're met by quite a lot of revs, the engine becomes quite vocal and, well, you don't really go anywhere, to be blunt. Um, I thought you were starting this video off-road. Yes, I know, I know, I'm getting to that, bear with me. Now, I know performance figures aren't really the most important aspect of this car, but in case you are wondering, it will take a whopping 13.9 seconds to hit 62 miles per hour, and the car will top out at 109. So yes, this isn't the car you would buy if you're looking for performance, but this is a, a Subaru XV. It's not built for performance, it's built to be rugged, dependable, reliable, and good off-road. So with that in mind, I think it's really about time I take it off-road. Right, so the first bit is gonna be a muddy uphill climb, apologies. Oh, there we are, the lighting did go a bit iffy. So before I go any further, I need to pop the car into X mode. X mode? What's that? Well, it's a system which works alongside Subaru's famous symmetrical all-wheel drive system to give better grip in slippery conditions by limiting the throttle as well as working with the brakes and the gearbox to deliver better traction. It also gives you hill descent, which is active up to speeds of 12 miles per hour, and the X mode itself is active up to 18 miles per hour, although you can select the mode at 25 miles per hour or below in preparation. Right, and away we go. So we're starting with an uphill climb. Ooh, right, now I do need to explain, this car is on standard road tires. They are uh, Yokohama Blue Earth tires. So this hasn't got any off-road tires or any proper knobblies. So this car is as it would be when it comes out of the factory. So far, it's taken up fine. Now, regular viewers may remember that a few weeks ago I took a Suzuki Vitara off-road. Now, this car, the XV, has got better ground clearance than, than the Suzuki. This car has got 220 millimetres of ground clearance. Oh, that's a bit tight through there. Whereas the Suzuki had 180 millimeters so this car is 40 millimeters higher the only problem is this car is also wider so this car is um 25 millimeters so two and a half centimeters an inch wider 
than the Suzuki I drove off-road. So I do need to be a bit careful in places because yes, this car is wider, but it is higher. This car is also heavier. This is around 200 kilograms heavier than the Suzuki I took off-road, but it's lapped this up pretty well. That's quite a steep incline, but I've made it. Got a, got a few bemused locals looking at me. Oh, you will need to move out of my way, pedestrians. Thank you. Right. Oh, bit of slippage there. Now, one great thing about this car is when you pop it into X mode, you get an off-road display on the information screen at the top of the dashboard. It gives you angles and it tells you how hard the wheels are working. And it is quite a cool little display. And it really highlights Subaru's pedigree of off-roading to include such features in a car that for most buyers, well, for a few buyers I imagine, probably won't need, but it's good to know you have it if you do need it. You get a sense that this car was built to do this. It loves doing this. If this car had a face, it would be smiling right now. Apologies if my camera is shaking. It's getting a bit bumpy and I'm going a little bit faster. Puddle. Oh. Whoa, that's deeper than I was expecting, but the XV, it loves it. It loves getting dirty. I maintain that really a Subaru isn't a Subaru if it isn't muddy. Right, take it through this puddle. This puddle looks pretty deep. <laughs> Cracking stuff. God knows how dirty this car has now got, but I want this car to get as dirty as possible. But I have to say, this is impressive stuff. Ugh. And to be honest, this does feel a little bit too easy for the car. I get a sense that the car is saying to me, come on Aaron, is this all you've got? Come on, I could do this for breakfast. So for those of you looking to buy an XV, wanting to know if it will be any good of road, I can tell you with utmost confidence that it is. Now, I want to see how the car deals with this bit, because when I did it in the Vitara, I did get a little bit stuck, so it'd be, it'd be interesting to see how the XV copes. So it's this bit here where I kind of got stuck. Oh, gotta be careful. Oh, go on, go on. Yes, go on little Subaru. Well, it's not little, but you know what I mean. Right, so let's go back down the steep bit where I started. So both feet are away from the pedals completely. I've got two bystanders up the top of the hill, watching on. I'm sure they're impressed by the uh, XV's hill descent. It's working very well. It's taking me down nice and gently. All I need to do is just keep on the straight-ish and narrow. Watch out for that small log. I've got plenty of ground clearance for that. I'll just make sure I keep it in the ruts. And that's all I really need to do. So the system works pretty well. Right, starting to even out a little bit. So give it a bit of a throttle. As we start to descend once more. And again, take my feet off the pedals. Hill descent isn't, oh, there we are, now it's kicking in. There we are. For a moment, I thought it was gonna leave me hanging. Right, a bit breaks over that bump. 
and we are back onto tarmac. Right, so now that I'm back on the road, let's see how it does as a road car. So now we're back on tarmac, let me speak more about how the car performs on road. So the ride is quite firm, I won't lie. Now once you get up to speed, it isn't too bad, but at low speeds, the car can be quite jiggly. Would I go so far to call it outright uncomfortable? No, but if you're looking for a smooth riding SUV or crossover, then you may want to look away from the XV. On the plus side though, the handling is pretty good. Now you think that there would be a fair amount of body roll given the car's high ground clearance, but no. In the corners, the body roll is well controlled. It doesn't lean too much. There's a good amount of grip, of course, thanks to the symmetrical all-wheel drive system. The brakes are good. And the steering's pretty good as well. It's pretty responsive, it's pretty direct. The weighting is pretty good. And the feedback isn't too bad. However, would I go so far to call this car fun when it comes to handling? No, I'm afraid not. Now this car is fun off-road, I must admit, I have had a blast getting, it, getting this car very muddy. So for those of you that are offended that I haven't cleaned the car, now I've taken it on-road, I do apologise. It's a super, it should be muddy. That's how they should come out of the factory if you ask me. But I will of course put some nice glamour shots in of the car when it is clean to keep you happy. The new XV is built on Subaru's global platform, meaning compared to its predecessor, this car has got 70% more torsional rigidity, which can only be a good thing. Also, this has better impact absorption, so this car will be safer if you, well, God forbid, if you have a crash. It has 40% better impact absorption compared to its predecessor, so needless to say, this is a pretty safe car. So let's touch upon refinement. Refinement is, well, okay, it's nothing amazing. There is a bit of road noise coming into the cabin from the 17 inch alloys, and it is quite audible. Is it deafening? No, uh, I wouldn't say so. But when you need to get some power out of the car, as you can imagine from a CVT, it does get quite noisy in here. But when you're cruising like I am now at about 35 miles per hour, give or take, Apart from the tyre noise, it is pretty quiet in here. Wind noise is well controlled, so refinement isn't awful, but it's not the best in its class. Let's talk about the price, as this may be an area that puts some of you off, as even the base model starts at £25,325. However, it does come with a fair amount of kit, including 17-inch alloys, LED headlights, 8-inch touchscreen, DAB radio, Bluetooth, smartphone connectivity, reversing camera, dual zone climate control, heated front seats, keyless entry, adaptive cruise control, and a plethora of safety kit. For those of you looking for more, you can have the SE Premium, which is two grand more, adding features such as a sunroof, leather seats, eight-way electronically adjustable driver's seat, and sat-nav. It's also worth noting, if you go for the 2 litre engine, you get 18 inch alloys as standard and you also get a paddle shift for the gearbox. Now let's talk about fuel economy. Now this car is far from the most frugal in its class. On a combined run using the old method of testing, NEDC, Subaru states that the XV will offer me 40.9 mpg and in my experience I've been hitting around 39 mpg so I have got quite close to the official figure although let's be honest this car is far from frugal but what if you go for the 2 litre engine well you would expect that engine to use up more in regards to fuel but it doesn't because on a combined run that also offers 40.9 mpg and you want to hear something really interesting this engine emits 157 grams per kilometer of co2 however the 2 litre engine emits 155 grams per kilometer of CO2. So this engine, the 1.6, somehow emits more CO2 emissions than its bigger two litre brother. Hmm, okay. I'm not too sure how that works out. For the first year of VED, you'll be expected to pay 515 pounds. 
And for those of you looking for a diesel, well, you can't have it. So if you want a diesel SUV, you will, of course, need to look elsewhere. Space in the front is pretty good. I've got a good amount of cubby holes and getting a good driving position is very easy because the steering wheel adjusts for rake and reach like so. And my driver's seat also has a good level of adjustment. But if you go for the SE Premium, you do get a driver's seat which is eight way electronically adjustable for better convenience and comfort. Let's talk about the cubby holes. So the door bins aren't massive, but you can just about fit a one litre bottle of water in there with a bit of force like so. There's space left over for a smaller item. So for example, a packet of crisps, which fit in rather nicely. In the middle, you've got two cup holders, which are a little bit too big for my 500 milliliter bottle of water, but they are a little bit too small for my one liter bottle of water. It doesn't quite fit, but if you have a coffee cup or perhaps a small flask or indeed a 750 milliliter bottle of water, it should fit fine. You've also got a slot in the center console where you can pop a smartphone or the car key or a smaller item. You've got two USB ports in there, an auxiliary port and a 12 volt socket. But one thing I do find a little bit annoying is because you can't really see the USB ports because they are buried so deep into the center console, trying to plug a USB lead in can be a bit of a faff, particularly as for me in particular, I don't have a lot of space to kind of move my hand. So. You kind of have to do it by touch. There we are, we are in. So hopefully you get my point. It is a bit of a faff. You get a center armrest, which has got storage in there. So I can put my packet of, of crisps in there if I wanted to. And my sausage roll, like so. You've got two more USB ports in there and a 12 volt socket, which is quite handy. And of course you do get a glove box, which offers a decent amount of space, but a lot of it is taken up by this rather thick manual, which is um, quite sizable to say the least. Look at that. It's like a blunt weapon. But on the whole, storage in here is pretty good. As always, the driver's seat has been set for me. I am six foot two, so I am of course a taller guy. However, as you can see, I've got plenty of knee room left over and loads of leg room as well. Very impressive indeed. Plus, I can fit my feet underneath the seat in front of me so I can really stretch back and relax. Very impressive stuff indeed. So if you are taller than me, fear not, you'll have loads of leg room. Yes, good stuff. But what about headroom? Well, I've got enough headroom, but if you are taller than me, I think you would struggle. However, for the majority of adults and of course children, there's going to be plenty of headroom for you. Now, could you fit three adults in the back? Um, I think you could do it, but it would be a bit of a squeeze. The middle seat is set a little higher up. Therefore, you will have a little less headroom. I've just about got enough, and you do have quite a thick transmission tunnel as well. I think for two adults, it'd be fine, of course, and for three children, it should be fine, so no issues there. What I do have a little bit of an issue with is there's no charging ports back here. So if you want to charge your smartphone or your tablet on the go and you're in the rear, you can't. Now, there are plenty of charging places to be had in the front of the car, but in the rear, you don't get any, which I think is a little bit disappointing, but you do get a decent amount of storage. You've got door bins where you can fit a bottle of water in there. In fact, let me reach and get one. Uh, this bottle is 500 milliliters, so that fits in very nicely indeed. I've got a bit of, bit of space left over. You also have two cup holders in the middle and an armrest, if you don't have a middle passenger, of course. So again, my bottle of water fits in there very nicely. Not too bad. What about the boot? Well, it offers 385 litres, which isn't the biggest in class, but it should be just fine for day-to-day -day use. However, if you need more space, you can, of course, fold down the 6040 rear seats to give you 1,290 litres worth of space. There's no spare wheel as standard, but you do, of course, get a puncture repair kit. Let's finish with safety, which is an area where the XV does very well. As standard, it comes with seven airbags, autonomous emergency braking, lane keep assist, lane departure warning, adaptive cruise control, and sway warning. That's not all though, as you also get rear cross traffic alert, blind spot monitoring, lane change assist, and steering responsive headlights. 
So it's little wonder that Euro NCAP awarded this car five stars. The Subaru XV is bound to appeal to outdoorsy types thanks to its rugged dependability and its incredible off-road performance, even on road tyres. However, for the majority of other buyers, I don't think this SUV will be the one to go for, purely because the price tag may put some of you off, and if that doesn't, I think the limited choice of engines and gearboxes will. And let's face it, this SUV is more than what you need for a trip to the shops or the school run. You don't need this kind of off-road capability for your daily commute. So I think this car is a bit niche. I think it has a very narrow kind of audience, which is by no means a bad thing. And I think if you are a Subaru fan, you will love this car. But for the majority of other buyers, yes, I definitely think there are better choices of crossovers slash SUVs out there. But let's not take anything away from the XV because it is rugged, dependable and safe. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you have enjoyed it. If so, give it a massive thumbs up. If you are subscribed, don't forget to click that bell icon so you get notified every time I make a video. And if you aren't subscribed, guys, what are you waiting for? Be sure to subscribe for more Car Obsession.